Good morning. Good morning, everyone. We continue in our prayer class. Uh, we're looking at the Shema. Um, we are holding at the beginning of the paragraph, the Ahafta. We looked at the first two lines of the Shema. We've already established that the Shema is a tefillah, is a prayer that is fundamental to Yiddishkeit, to our relationship with Hashem, to our relationship with the world. And that's why the Shema, we don't begin with the Shema immediately, but rather it follows on from um, the morning prayers and the verses of praise and then blessings for the Shema. And then we arrive at the Shema. So in the Nusachari Sidur, we're on page 42. And um, it's the Ahafta Es Hashem Elakecha. You shall love the Lord your God. V'chol levavacha, v'chol nafshacha, v'chol ma'odecha. With all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. So there are several mitzvahs in this paragraph of the Shema, the first of which is the mitzvah, the commandment to love Hashem. So before we go on to talk about the fashion in which we should love Hashem, where we mention three ways over here, with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might, let's first address the idea of a mitzvah, of a commandment, where we are commanded to have an emotion, love, right? You shall love the Lord your God. So immediately the question arises, how can we be given a mitzvah to love Hashem, to love anything? Um, either we do, or we don't. So what is the meaning? What is the meaning of this mitzvah via hafta es Hashem alakecha? That we should love the Lord our God. Love the Lord your God. And, um, and there are many, many answers to this question. We'll touch upon a few of these explanations. So um, if somebody would ask of you to love a person that you don't know who they are, they'll tell you this is here, I'm going to introduce you to this person, and you should love them. How are you able to love somebody that you don't know? But if you would then be told that this person, even though you, up until now, you didn't realize that there was a connection to that person, but that person has been a source of so many things that you have in life, that person paid for your tuition as you were growing up, that person filled your wardrobe, that person was responsible for all the food in your house. That person was responsible for all the vacations that your family took. As you begin to hear all the amazing things that this person, which seemingly was a stranger to you with no connection, you begin to have feelings of gratitude, and ultimately feelings of love towards a person that has been so benevolent and so good in providing so many of the things that you have benefited from throughout your life. And this, the Rambam says, is the meaning 
of this mitzvah, the ahavta es Hashem alakecha, you shall love the Lord your God, is the mitzvah to get to know Hashem, to contemplate on the fact. If you remember, we spoke about the fact in the first line where we said the, the, the commandment to B'nai Israel, to hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one, is not the mitzvah of monotheism, but it's the mitzvah to contemplate on the fact that everything in life is Hashem. Ein od milvado. There is nothing other than God in this world. And this mitzvah of Yahavta es Hashem you shall love the Lord your God, is the mitzvah to contemplate on all that Hashem is and all that Hashem does. And the natural result of that contemplation will be via hafta es Hashem elokecha, and you will love the Lord your God. We had um, um, leading up to the Shema were the brachas of the Shema, and if you look at the top of page forty-two at the at the bracha that ends off right before we go into saying the Kriya Shema. This is also something to contemplate on that will bring about the love. The bracha ends off, Baruch Atah Hashem HaBolche Ba'ama Yisrael Ba'ahava. Bless are you, Lord, who chooses his people, Yisrael Ba'ahava, with love. And the whole bracha, um, that segues into the Shema is all about the way Hashem has love for B'nai Yisrael. We talked earlier on in the bracha about how Hashem chose us and gave us the Torah and we asked that Hashem make it something that, that is natural for us, that we should be drawn to the Torah, that we should understand the Torah. And then we finish with this this bracha that Hashem chooses B'nai Yisrael ba'ahava with love. Habocher is in the present. He chooses us every single day ba'ahava with love, not necessarily commensurate with our level of observance or our level of commitment, but ba'ahava with love, with the chesed of Hashem, that he continues to choose us every single day to be his children, to observe his Torah, to keep his mitzvahs, to be the ones to fulfill Hashem's desire in having a dwelling place in this world. So as we come to these words in the Shema and this commandment to love Hashem, it's the commandment to contemplate all that Hashem is to us. And when we contemplate on that fact, the result will be automatically that you will love the Lord your God, you will love Hashem. Now, um, the truth of the matter is that Hashem has endowed within every single Jew a hidden love for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, a hidden love for God. And um, we know that every mitzvah that Hashem commands is a mitzvah that we have the ability to fulfill. Otherwise, Hashem would not ask us to do something. So if Hashem says to us, you shall love the Lord your God, then, um, then it's a mitzvah that we have the ability to fulfill. And the more we learn about the deeds of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, from creation of the world until present times, or even from before creation of the world, the more we bring out that Ahava, that 
love for our Kodesh Baruch Hu, that love for God, which is found where? It's found in Anashama. It's found in our soul. In, um, in Tehillim, chapter 103, David al says, says, nafshi es Hashem. My soul blesses Hashem. My soul blesses God. So um, there's a medrash on this that one day a uh, uh, an apikoros, a critic of Yiddishkeit, came to Rabbi Gamliel, and um, he asked Rabbi Gamliel about Hashem. He said to Rabbi Gamliel, "Where is he? where is he? Where is God?" So Rabbi Gamliel said, "I don't know." So the critic started to laugh and sneer. And he, he said, is this your prayer and wisdom? Every day you pray to him without knowing where he is? Rabbi Gamliel responded and he said, you're asking me about something that cannot be reached even if one walks for 500 years. Let me ask you about something that is right with you night and day. And let's see if you know where it is. So the fellow said, well, what would that be? What are you referring to? So Rabbi Gamliel said, I'm talking about your neshama. I'm talking about your soul. Where is it? Tell me, where's your neshama? Where's your soul? So the man said, I don't know. What's the idea being brought out over here? That is that Yes, there is a, a work that has to be done in order to perceive HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And just like a person has to work on perceiving their neshama, their soul, so too a person has to put work into perceiving Hashem, to perceiving God. And that is what we say in this tefillah. We say Shema Yisrael. Listen, Yisrael, Shema isn't just hearing something. Shema is reflect, understand, put in an effort to realize that Ein Od Melvado, there is nothing besides Hashem in this world. It is a fact without any question that Hashem Echad, that Hashem is one, that Hashem exists, that nothing in the world exists without God. But we know these truths. We know they are absolute. Our job is lachkar. Our job is to make the effort of understanding and finding Hashem in this world. And as a result, what will the result be? You will love the Lord your God. So if Hashem is beyond perception, as we said, so how do we come to this love? So David HaMelech tells us, This love is found within the neshama of each and every single Jew. And just as we cannot necessarily pinpoint our neshama, but we know that the neshama is there, so too the love of Hashem is available for every single person. All we need to do is to work on it. If we have the knowledge that there is this natural connection between us and our HaKadosh Baruch Hu, then we will succeed in this Ahava, in this love of uh, of Hashem. So every day we receive kindness from God. God doesn't owe us anything. He owes us, he owes us nothing. Um, and yet every day we receive countless acts of kindness from Hashem, from God. So now we can understand why it's so important to go through all the prayers leading up to the Shema. Because the Shema is where we have to con contemplate and work on producing that love that we all have for our Kodesh Baruch Hu. 
And having mentioned and, and being grateful for all the goodness and all the kindnesses that Hashem has done to us personally on a daily basis and has done for us as a nation from generation to generation, now we can begin to work on this mitzvah of Yahafta Es Hashem Elokecha to love the Lord our God. So it's all about contemplation. It's all about understanding Hashem, understanding God, and arriving at the natural love as a result of that contemplation. It's important for us to remember what love means. Love of another. We say, We shall love the Lord our God. Whatever we understand about Hashem is by way of example of humans. So if we are given a commandment to love Hashem, we have to look at the way we need to love another human being. Take our parents, for example. We love our parents. And the more we realize what our parents have done for us, the deeper is our love. But what does that mean to love our parents? The love translates into the relationship where we want, we can't do enough for our parents, where we don't want to disappoint our parents, where we want to be able to pay our parents back, even though we know that as much as we will ever do in our life, we will never be able to repay them, but we will certainly do the best that we can. We wouldn't want to disappoint them. We wouldn't want to hurt them. We wouldn't want to do things that we know would cause them to be embarrassed, cause them to have any pain. And so too, in our relationship with Hashem, in order to be able to fulfill this mitzvah, to love the Lord our God, we need to know how to love Hashem. We're talking about loving Hashem. We know that Hashem loves us. We said that already, that God chose us for Ahava and chooses us continuously for Ahava with love. And whatever he does for us is in our best interest. Now we need to find out how to love Hashem, how to show our love and translate that emotion into the relationship of loving God. So in order to be able to do that, having knowledge of Torah is of utmost importance because it's the Torah, Torah, which means direction. It's the Torah that tells us how we can live our best life, not only so that we benefit, but ultimately that we show our love to our Kaddish Baruch Hu, that we show our love to God. So by contemplating, by meditating upon these thoughts, that's how we bring out the love. That's how we bring out the passion of keeping the mitzvahs, of learning the Torah so that we're able to live a life that shows our appreciation and our love to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to God. The word via hafta, remember that, that the Torah doesn't have vowels in it, right? So the word via hafta can also be read, the same exact letters can also be read as the hafta. So the ahafta means and you shall love. The ihafta means and you, the ahafta es Hashem alakecha, you shall make God loved. You should cause that God should be loved. That means that the way that we conduct ourselves is in the way that is a kiddush Hashem. It's a sanctification of God's name. And then anybody who sees us and sees how we live our lives with, with morals, with ethics, with kindness, with caring, with responsibility, that causes that Hashem is 
loved. So that's another thing to contemplate on as we say the Shema, not only that we ourselves work on loving Hashem, but also that we conduct ourselves in a way that whoever meets us comes to love Hashem through our example. Um, this reminds me that um, when I was becoming bas mitzvah, the age of, of 12 years old, and um, at that, uh, right before my bas mitzvah, I wrote to the Rebbe for a bracha, to ask for a bracha as it became bas mitzvah. And I remember one of the things that stands out from the letter of the Rebbe is that the Rebbe gives a bracha that as we become of age to carry out the mitzvahs of Hashem, that also we should merit to, to be a light, to teach others. And the Rebbe underlines what is the way to teach others, not by getting on a, a, a crate at Hyde Park, even though I lived in a good place to be able to do that, but rather the Rebbe's bracha is to be a living example. That if one wants to teach others how to live a godly life, how to live a good life, the best way, probably the only way really, is to live that way, to be a living example. And that's the bracha that the Rebbe gave, that we should have the strength to be able to live in the way that is an example to others. And just by way of showing, others will learn how to have a relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, how to have a relationship with God. So let's look first at the specifics of the way the Shema tells us to love Hashem. The Ahavta es Hashem alakech, you shall love the Lord your God, v'chol levavacha, with all your heart. In Hebrew, the word for heart is lev. V'chol levavacha, you will notice, has two letters bet, twice the letter bet. You could say with all your heart, with all your heart. Why do we have here twice the letter bet, with all your heart? So this includes um, every single one of us contains a yetzahara and a yetzetov, an evil inclination and a good inclination. And where do they reside? They reside in the heart. So every single moment of our day, there is a struggle between the evil inclination and the good inclination. And that's the, the presence of the evil inclination is what gives us the opportunity to choose, to choose to do the right thing, to choose to live a godly life, to choose to recognize Hashem in our life. So the way Hashem tells us to love him is with all of our heart. What does that mean? That means with the Yetzahara and with the Yetzah Tov. So how is it that, um, how can we serve Hashem with both of these? How can we serve Hashem with the Yetzahara and with the Yetzer Tov. So with the Yetzer Tov, with a good inclination, it's pretty self-explanatory. When we follow, when we give strength to the good inclination and we do the right thing, then we are loving Hashem and we are serving Hashem with all of our heart. What about with the evil inclination, with the Yetzer Hara, the evil inclination. So when a person works on subduing their evil inclination and causing it to become weak, that is serving Hashem with the Yetzer Hara, with the evil inclination. There's another explanation also given that when we do the positive mitzvahs, when we fulfill the will of Hashem, that's using 
the yetzer tov, the good inclination. And when we hold ourselves back and we do not transgress the negative commandment that is subduing the yetzer hara, subduing the evil inclination. So that's loving Hashem with all of our hearts. We want to give it our all. Um, and we should remember again that usually when someone comes across to us in a loving nature, we have a, the, the, we respond in kind. So we should contemplate on the fact that Hashem loves us and then we will have that mirror response to our Kodesh Baruch Hu. We will respond in kind. Um, there's a, a very nice explanation also from the Chedrush Arim that we can explain Bachol Levavacha with all your heart is, you know, that we say here, what's a b'chol nafshacha? B'chol nafshacha means with all your soul. So that means that if a person is pushed to choose between Hashem and their life, right? The soul is what gives us life. So when a person says the Shema, they they have in mind that they're willing to serve Hashem, even if it means giving up of their life. That the connection to Hashem and the love of Hashem is that if a person is pushed to choose between Hashem and their life, they will choose God. They will choose um, choose Hashem. And we've heard countless countless stories of Jews who maybe didn't necessarily live life with such a commitment to Hashem, but when push came to shove, they were willing to give up their lives. And what was the last word on their lips was the words of Shema, acknowledging Hashem being everything. So just as we say, the Chedush Arim says that just as we say with, with, um, with all your heart, um, we can we can connect it to b'chol nafshecha, meaning just as if Hashem will take our neshama and rather we would give it to remain connected to Hashem, so too even if Hashem takes your heart. What does that mean? That even if Hashem takes your heart, that means that sometimes there can be an occasion where we come to do a mitzvah and we don't feel it. It's not there. It's not in our heart. And we should really never take for granted that our hearts are one with the mitzvah. It's something that we daven every day. We ask Hashem in the brachas of the Shema earlier in the, in the morning blessings. So a person needs to realize that even when their heart is not in it, that's not a reason not to do the mitzvah. One must serve Hashem in any situation, regardless of whether their heart is in it or, or not, right? What does Nike say? Just do it. Because the truth is, ultimately, a mitzvah is what connects us to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That The mitzvah, the word mitzvah comes from the word sabta. It's a connector. So even if our heart isn't in it, we should do the mitzvah anyway. We know that this is the will of Hashem. We know that this is what connects us to God. And therefore, we should do the mitzvah. And that will bring about a stronger connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu in a revealed way, and we will be able to move on to a, a greater love of Hashem in our, in our life and in, in the performance of our mitzvahs. We shouldn't buckle under to the Yetzirah, to the evil inclination that tells us 
if you don't feel it, don't do it. The mitzvah should be done no matter what. Um, on Yom Kippur, in the Musaf Davening, we read about the martyrs, the 10 martyrs that were killed by the Romans. And um, one, of those one of those martyrs was Rabbi Akiva. And, um, and Rabbi Akiva explained this verse that we should serve Hashem with all our soul, meaning even if Hashem will bring an end to our life because of the service of Hashem. And, um, and it's explained that um, as long as Yaakov Avinu thought that Yosef was was dead if you remember the story in the parsha where Yaakov Yosef was sold by his brothers as long as Yaakov thought that Yosef was dead Yaakov could not fulfill this mitzvah to love Hashem with all his soul to the point where he was willing even to give up his life why because Yaakov knew that he was destined to bring the souls, the, the bodies actually, the souls into the bodies of the 12 tribes. So when Yosef was sold, Yaakov didn't know that Yosef was alive. So for all the years that Yaakov said the Shema, he couldn't say this part of the Shema with truth with a full heart that he should love Hashem with all his heart and with all his soul. Why? Because he wasn't ready to give up his neshama yet. He wasn't ready to give up his soul because he needed to bring, so far as he understood, he still needed to bring another neshama into the world, the 12 tribes. Um, and so what happened when Yaakov finds out that Yosef was still alive, then he realizes that he actually has fulfilled his mission in bringing the 12 tribes into the world. And that's why at that moment, what does he do? He recites the Shema. You would think that he would he would fall on Yosef and he would hug Yosef and he would kiss him. No. What does he do? He immediately recites the Shema because now was the first moment since Yosef was sold that he was, he was able to do this mitzvah of the Shema, of being able to say that he's willing to serve Hashem with his neshama as well, if necessary, to give up his life. And when a person has an opportunity to do a mitzvah, they should never push it off, not even for a moment. And that's why Yaakov said, after he met Yosef, he said, now I can die for I have seen your face, for you're still alive. What did he mean? Why would he say something like that? Now I can die. What he meant was, now I can say the Shema properly. Now when I say I'm willing to give up my life for Hashem, I can say it with complete devotion because if the occasion arise, I know that I have brought into the world all of, all of, the, of the tribes. And so we find also with Rabbi Akiva himself, just before he passed away, Rabbi Akiva said all of his life, he said, I had pain regarding these words with all my soul, because I would say to myself, when am I going to have an opportunity to fulfill this mitzvah? So here I'm telling Hashem I'm willing to give up my life, but the, the occasion has never presented itself now. 
that the opportunity has come. Will I not fulfill this mitzvah? And that's what the, the, the sages tell us. And we read this in the, um, in the Avodah, in the Musaf of, of Yom Kippur, that Rabbi Akiva was, um, was joyous even at this very, very difficult and, and hard time in, in his life. Um, the last words that Rabbi Akiva said when he passed away was Echad. Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elekeinu, Hashem Echad. If you remember, we spoke about the fact that when a person says this word, that they should have in mind that they're willing even to give up their life for the sake of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, for the sake of God. The truth is that sometimes it's more difficult to live for Hashem than to give up one's life for Hashem. Because to give up one's life, it's over in a moment. Living one's life for Hashem is something that is a constant battle. As long as we have the Yetzirahara, as long as we have the evil inclination, then, um, then it's a struggle. But... Um, that's why we say this tefillah multiple times a day to give us to give us the strength to be able to um, to live with this love of Hashem and not just to feel the love but actually to show the love and to have the power over the Yetzahara, over the evil inclination. And that brings us to the third expression, to love Hashem b'chol ma'odecha, with all one's might, which the sages tell us, what does it mean to love Hashem with all one's might? The Chachamim say this refers to our possessions, to our wealth. We have to love Hashem more than any of our possessions which might seem to be strange. How could one love their possessions more than love of HaKadosh Baruch Hu? But we know that, uh, that we live in a world of Sheker, in a, in a, a world of falsehood, and that, uh, that the love of money and the love of possessions does drive people to, to leave, God forbid, Hashem out of their lives. And therefore, we are commanded to love Hashem with everything that we have. Sometimes a person can feel that living a life of Torah values is expensive. And the truth is, it can be. It can be expensive. But think about this mitzvah, that when a person spends money on kosher meat, it costs more. We are fulfilling this mitzvah of loving Hashem with, with all that we have, with all of our possessions. When we love another person, we want to give to them. We want to shower them with love. So there's many ways of giving. There's giving time, there's giving attention, there is um, giving, um, giving in, and there's giving gifts, physical gifts. So too, when it comes to the mitzvahs, we shouldn't hold back. We shouldn't think twice about what we are going to spend to fulfill a mitzvah. Thus, we are fulfilling loving Hashem with all our possessions. The truth of the matter is, when a person leaves this world, they cannot take any of their possessions with them. But when a person use their possessions, use their wealth for mitzvahs, that is what a person takes with them to the uh, to meet Hakadosh Baruch Hu in Olam Haba in the world to come. So these are all things that we think about 
in our relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And the paragraph goes on. Vahayu hadvarim ha'ele asher anoichi matzavacha hayom al levavecha. And these words, which I command you today, shall be upon your heart. So, in order to recognize Hashem, we have to study the Torah, and that we need to use our seichel. We need to use our head, our intellect, to study the Torah. But Torah for intellectual exercise is not what it's all about. What does Hashem say over here? They shall be upon your heart. The words that you study intellectually need to be incorporated into your everyday life. They need to be in your heart. Notice also that the Pasuk says, that the verse says, that I have commanded you Hayom today. Every single day, we should reestablish our marriage with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, our entering into the relationship with Hashem at Sinai when he gave us the Torah, Hayom, as if it was done today, as if we were given this gift of the relationship with Hashem, Hayom, today. That's why it's one of the Sheish Sechiros. It's one of the six things, the six remembrances that we're supposed to remember every single day when we finish our davening, when we finish our prayers, there's a list of six things that we're supposed to remember every single day. And the, the first one is to remember the day that Hashem took us out of Egypt. And the second one is to remember when we stood before Hashem at Chorev, which is Sinai, that Hashem gave us the Torah. It should be Hayom, as if it was today, not something that happened years and years ago. As Hashem reestablishes his choosing of us on a consistent basis, right? We finished the bracha before the Shema, ha-bocha ba'ama Yisrael ba'ahava, who chooses consistently. Hashem continues to choose us every single day. And so too, we should view this choosing as if it happened hayom today. How do we do that? How do we keep that freshness in the relationship with our Kaddish Baruch Hu, in the relationship with God, the way to keep that freshness is to learn Torah, is to study Torah. Torah is Chochmas Hashem. It's God's wisdom. God's wisdom is boundless. It's endless. There is always going to be a new level of connectedness, a new level of understanding when it comes to Torah. And that's the way that we will keep the freshness alive in our relationship with Hashem and in our relationship with the Torah that he gave to us. Now, it's not good enough for us to have a relationship with Hashem, but the Shema continues with the mandate. V'shinantam you shall teach them to your children and you shall speak of them, meaning the mitzvahs of the Torah, when when you sit in your house or and when you walk on the road and when you lie down and when you get up. So we have a mitzvah to be machanach, to educate the next generation in the ways of Hashem. And it's something for us to think about. 
as Jews, we know how important education is. And we need to realize that as much as we give weight to education so that our children will be able to earn a living, so that our children will be able to understand the world, even more important is the education in Torah, the education in a way of life that our children will be able to fulfill the mitzvahs of our Kaddish Baruch Hu, will be able to do them and to do them with, 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 their, with their heart and with everything that they have. And there's only one way to do that, and that is to educate our children. As we mentioned earlier, education isn't only about the books. Surely the books are very, very important. We have to teach children. But more importantly is the example that we live a life where our children, where the next generation don't just hear the words coming out of our mouths, but they actually see that we live that which we are passing down to them. It's, it, 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 it's vital for the continuation of the relationship with Hashem and the continuation of the fulfillment of, um, of our purpose in this world. When a person goes up to Shemayim after 120 years, the way they live their lives can be seen by the impact that they left in this world, whether it's on their own biological children or on anybody that they had an influence on in this world. There's a story actually, as I was looking through, um, as I was looking through a safe for Talalei Oros today, I saw a, a story that was quoted um, by my great grandfather, Rebellia Lapian, and he writes about a Jewish soldier who fought for Russia against Japan. And the Jew um, was very heroic during this time, and he won a Medal of Honor from the Tsar. So what had happened was that the Japanese had thrown several bombs into a Russian camp, but the Jew was very, very quick thinking. He caught them, he grabbed them, and he threw them into the river before they exploded. And everybody in Russia heard about this story of how this um, soldier saved the day. And um, this soldier came from a small Russian village and um, his family were not necessarily known for being loyal to the czar and to the government. And, and actually at that time, his father had been accused of a crime against the government, government and, was, um, and was brought to trial. When, his, when the hero's father came before the judge and said his name, so the judge like sat up in his chair and he said, oh, he said, are you related to that famous Jewish soldier that saved the day? And the man said, actually, I am. Um, I'm his father. So the judge turned to the father and he said, I hereby exonerate you from all the charges because you must have brought up your son with great loyalty to the mother Russia to the point that he was willing to act with such heroism, even at the risk of his own life. So therefore, I come to the conclusion that you also must be loyal to this country and all suspicion is removed from you. And, um, and um, Rebellia said that Chazal, that our sages taught us in the Gemara, that a son gives merit to his father. So imagine the merit 
as we perpetuate the learning of Torah to the next generation. And this is a responsibility that every parent has to their own children. And not only does every parent have to their own children, but we as a nation, as a collective community, have a responsibility to teach this Torah to the next generation. And that is how our existence and our life can be measured by what effort we put in to teach the words of Torah to the next generation. Um, I think in Hilchas Talmud Torah, in the laws of, of teaching Torah, it says that we have an obligation to spend at least 20 minutes a day to the education of our children, making sure that our children are receiving a proper education. And it makes sense. We're here in this world for a reason, for a purpose. And that is the purpose of Torah. That is making this place a dwelling place for Hashem. So it stands to reason as we are commanded over here, not just that we have to make sure that we fulfill this mission, but we have an obligation to make sure that the next generation continues with this mission until the coming of Mashiach speedily in our days. Um, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, when do we have an obligation to learn? We said, and to teach, you shall teach them thoroughly to your children. You speak to them when. When you sit in your house, we said, and when you walk on the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. So we mentioned here four instances of teaching Torah and learning Torah. The Friedrich Rebbe, the previous Lubavitch Rebbe, whose yacht site is this week, um, on the 10th day of Shvat, don't miss the Fabrengen on Thursday evening in Mitz Hashem on my husband's Zoom. So the Friedrich Rebbe says that um, when learning Torah, there are several levels and there are several stages. We know that there's four levels of Torah. There's Pardes, Pshat, Remez, Drush, and Sod, the um, simple meaning, which is anything but simple. The Remez, which is the commentaries, the, the Midrash, the story behind the story, and the Sod, the Kabbalah, the mysticism of the Torah. But there is also four stages to a person's connection to Torah. And these are mentioned over here. When you're sitting at home, the Friedrich Rebbe says, this is the status of the neshama above. The soul, before it comes down into this physical world, what is the neshama doing? In Shemayim, in heaven, the neshama is close to Hashem. And what does it do? It's learning Torah constantly. That's what the neshama does in Shamayim in heaven. Or we could also uh, uh, attribute this stage of when you're sitting at home to when the neshama, when the, when the, um, during the pregnancy, when the fetus is in the womb. So the Talmud tells us that as long as the woman is pregnant, that the, there's an angel teaching the Torah, the entire Torah is taught to the fetus and um and not only that but that there is a candle lit above the head of the fetus and the child is able to see from one end of the world to another and this first stage in the pasuk is what's being referred to as and it's natural habitat 
before the neshama comes down into the world. And then it goes on from there to the second stage of and when you're going on the road, that refers to the neshama's journey, to the soul's journey in this world. And um, it journeys from world to world until ultimately it comes into the world that we live in. And it's called its journey because it's not the natural habitat of the neshama. It's not the natural place for the neshama to be. But still in all, as long as the neshama is in a body, it still has to be connected to Hashem and still has to be connected to Torah because it's through living in this world that it brings about the connection of the Torah to the physical world. Um, and that coming down on this journey and leaving its higher place next to God in the, in the spiritual world is so that ultimately it can rise even higher. And the next stage after after life in the body, in this world, and connecting the Torah to this world, comes to and when you lie down. And that is when a person passes away, when the neshama leaves the body and the body lies down in the grave. And as we mentioned earlier, after 120, when a person leaves this world, it doesn't take any material things that were acquired in this world with it. The only thing an ashama takes with it after 120 are the good deeds and the Torah that they acquired in this world. And that's what goes with the neshama when it lies down. And the last stage is uvakumecha, and when you rise up, that's referring to the future era of Mashiach, to the resurrection of the dead, as we believe as Jews that Mashiach is going to come and all souls that ever were in this world and have since passed on are going to come back to this world. And once again, Torah is going to be the agenda we are going to continue to learn Torah, but the Torah that we're going to learn is going to be with a whole new clarity, a whole new level of understanding because all the limitations of Golos, of exile that covers up the godliness in the world now will be removed and all the distractions will be removed. The Sahara, the evil inclination will be removed when mashiach comes all those things that distract us from torah will no longer be any more and as we said the torah that we are going to enjoy is going to be of a much much higher level so this is the the friedrich rebbe explains these four things that we mention over here is the journey of the neshama, which is all surrounded by the Torah. And then the Shema, the first paragraph, finishes with the two mitzvahs of mezuzah and tefillim. Um, as it says, and you shall, you shall bind them as a sign upon your hand, and they shall be for a reminder between your eyes. Those are the tefillin of the head and of the hand. And you shall write them upon the doorposts of your house and upon your gates. Those are the mezuzahs. We'll talk a little bit more about those next week. And we will continue on to the second paragraph of the Shema. I want to wish everybody a beautiful day, a wonderful rest of the week. And we should all tap in to the neshama of the Frida Kareba. And of the Rebbe, as the Rebbe became Rebbe on Yud Shvat, a year after his father-in-law passed away. And there are many beautiful programs taking place in person. Um, so I hope to see everybody there. Have a wonderful and blessed day.
day. Thank, thank you, honey. Thank you very much.